Hey YouTube, how's it going today guys? Well, I um, thought I'd show you some of my homemade shop made tools uh, that I've done and tell you a little bit about each one. Um, the first one is actually a lawnmower blade balancer. Now you can buy these things about six bucks or so at Canadian Tire, but they're like a piece of junk really. Um, so I made a really good quality one and it supports a lot more blade sizes too than the other one does. And uh, it's pretty simple design. You know and uh, this was all done on the lathe and uh, it actually works quite well so our next tool um, just for giggles one day I thought I'd try making a wrench so uh, I made a little wrench a little seven millimeter wrench and uh, actually works quite nicely so I did this on my uh, milling machine that I used to have at the time and uh, not bad you know for first wrench um, Next is a couple of uh, different punches I've done, and these are made out of ratchet handles from Broken uh, Ratchets, cheaper ones. And uh, one was already knurled, this one was knurled, but then I took the knurling off, cut some rings in there, you know, and one's pointy, one's not so pointy. So, and they work nice. It's very good, strong steel uh, for actually making uh, punches with out of old ratchet handles. Um, this is just another generalized uh, punch that I put together too. And uh, it works quite quite well for its usage and use a hammer. Good for pushing out big pins with or uh, some bushings you can actually pop with it too. Um, this one I made out of an Allen key. And uh, Allen keys again are a really good strong material for making punches with. This one I just actually hand ground it just down on the grinder. I didn't even put this one on the lathe. And uh, turned out really good for, for being hand ground. Um, this one here is actually a tool that I made for removing... Uh, clutches on uh, weed whackers and uh, it uh, works great actually it's a pretty awesome little tool and uh, does a great job a little miniature hammer and this thing actually does come apart too it can unscrew and it's on there pretty tight right now um, but it does unscrew so but so if you're working on a little artistic stuff and you just need a little hammer and it works pretty good for that this is my um, spring winder um, tool. Put it in together like this. Put your spring notch in there. And then what I do is I've got a workbench outside and I put a screw in there and uh, put the other end of the hook for the spring in there. And then I just wind it up and wind it up until it's all coiled. Then I carefully remove this, hold everything in place. And I can put this in and then go to my cap, like lawnmower cap or weed whacker uh, chainsaw and just pop and it punches it right down and pops it in place where it needs to be. So that was actually uh, pretty cheap to build considering to buy the uh, authentic tool as I call it. Um, it's about 90 bucks and I was like new. So I built my own and it works. Um, this is just like a little adapter I built uh, for my car for changing the oil. Um, on the uh, oil filter and because uh, I use a one and a quarter inch socket because they didn't have at the time the tool for my car to do it with and you can't really get in there too easily with a, a socket and a half inch drive too easily um, so I built this shorter profile uh, jobby and it's got some play in it to allow for that little bit of movement that I needed that I wouldn't have got otherwise and then I milled out the sides and pop a wrench on there and sh unscrew the cap, away we go. And I can change my oil filter. Uh, another tool that I've developed, and I'm gonna be making another one for another valve, just so it's uh, a lot more stable. This tool gizmo is for working on uh, Crossman 357 valves that have the clip uh, style inside uh, for taking it apart. You put this in the vise and you've got the flats. You can clamp it in the vise, keeps that steady. And then use this tool, push down, take your clips in your other hand, and uh, you can release that clip out of there. And same for reassembly, push down, and there's a little hole drilled, not very deep in here, which you can put on the top of the valve stem, push down with. And I'm going to make one of these for the Crossman 1077s too. I tried the 1077 valve on this, it's a little bit of play, and um, you know, it still work, but too much play if you had to put all that pressure I got, I'm gathering. So I'm going to make a whole new style with a side cutout to capture the uh, pipe tube that comes along the side of the valve so that it can't move. So I'm going to develop a whole new 
uh, piece like this for the Crossman 1077s. Um, this is all my adapters so far to date that I need for working on uh, Crossman air guns as well as uh, a couple of the Chinese uh, CO2 guns for rebuilding valve stems. There's this part here, the arbor, which is two holes, different size, and the one side will actually catch the stem on the way through, and uh, for reassembly and take apart, and for a few other different types of valves um, that don't work well with this design, I've done this out of a solid chunk of round steel and put a, a double indent in there and uh, it captures the stem and I can actually reassemble the stem quite easily in there without any hassle at all. And the next tool I built, which is something you used to be able to buy, is the valves that screw apart on Crossman air guns. It uses this special tool with the two forks and the hole in the middle. And actually, um, I'm going to be making a couple more of these, uh, especially for one gentleman that asked for them. And uh, But so far, this one's lasted me quite a long time. And uh, I just put some cotter pins on the end so that I don't lose the handle, you know. And uh, I can disassemble and reassemble those valves real easy because you actually should have this tool to do it with. You can use a screwdriver, but it's real difficult. And uh, you don't want to screw up the cap when you screw it back in or try and pull it out because they're only made out of brass so you'd want the actual proper tool for being able to do that with. A um, couple more things. Um, I made this hammer which is actually the headpiece is uh, bronze on this. Bronze or brass? Brass. Bottom end's bronze. And uh, this is good if I have to hammer stuff that I don't want to mar up that a normal hammer would. And uh, I made this out of stainless steel. This is two pieces again. It's actually the larger version of that miniature one I did. I actually made a few of these things up because they're really good for uh, carrying in your snowmobile to de-ice your sliders with. You can get right in there with the uh, hammer. And because it comes apart, it's got the benefit of, you know, it doesn't take up much storage room or you can leave it together, whichever, and you can knock that ice off your sliders. Um, other tools I've built are threading adapters um, for different size uh, threads for um, different things I've built that require you know that thread and I make front sight pins uh, for muzzle brakes so I've got a whack load of different adapters for those too um, so I can screw the thing into this afterwards put it up on the lathe and do the final polishing and whatever I need to do on that front sight pin. Um, I also have a selection of arbors uh, for polishing muzzle brakes at high speed on a drill press. Um, I've got this one too for threaded muzzle brakes. This one's for a QB. Um, this is another threaded one. Um, this one was actually on a threaded QB. And that's just a spacer. And then this one, actually, a friend of mine put together for me. This is for 2240 uh, muzzle brakes, and it'll do quite, actually, quite the long muzzle brake in there. This gizmo is another one that a buddy of mine put together for me, um, and this one here is for putting the muzzle brake in there, and then you go in stages, either on the square or on the hex, for lining each section up for drilling holes, uh, which is one way of doing things. And. Uh, then I've got a modified barrel. It's a once, yeah, it's 177 cal barrel that I actually put tape on, and then I can clamp a muzzle brake to here and take it to the buffer too. You know, just whatever ways I want to do things um, for depending on the type of finish I'm going after would determine how I'm using it and what ar what arbor I'm going to need or adapter in order to accomplish that. So those are some of my shop made tools. Um, I've also got, oh yes, there's this one here. This is for actually doing brakes. It works on uh, pretty much any car that has a single piston um, front brake caliper. 
And you can buy the tool for like $25, $35, depending if you want the cheap, junky one or the deluxe model. Uh, where's the other? There it is. So we've got this plate here. Then we've got the pressure cap, the cap that goes on the top that pushes up against um, the chute. And this plate goes in behind on the piston. And uh, so no, this doesn't pressure on the shoe, sorry. But you got the plate here that goes against the piston. And this goes against here like this and it pushes the piston in. And uh, you just crank it down. I've got a handle that actually slips through the back here. And it's pretty simple and works great. And it's fine threaded. Um, so I can go a little bit at a time. I'm not taking, you know, big gouges and fine threaded. If you have to add more torque, you can do a fine thread uh, without any hassles. Um, but this was made from some quarter inch plate, a um, piece of metal that I turned down on each end and then welded it inside so it'll never move. And uh, it's all threaded. And then this cap, I'm going to devise a way to actually... Uh, well, I know how to do it. It's just taking the time to do it because I want it as a straight spinner. I don't want it to lock up, so I got to make it as a spinner. So I'm gonna have to re-drill in here, drill a hole through here, countersink, and uh, then that'll stay on. But for now, I actually have it so that it comes off, only because then it's easier to store the tool if the tool's all in pieces. So no biggie there. So that's another tool I built for doing brakes on cars with. Because I didn't want to spend $25 or whatever on a tool that I can make for next to nothing in my shop and I already had the materials so it really didn't cost me uh, anything more than some time and some welding wire um, but uh, the tool does work awesome uh, what else have I got in here oh yes this is a set of uh, this is for working on the Monte Carlo 95s and a few other models. Work on other cars too that have uh, the control arm bushings, the large diameter. This is for actually squeezing the suckers back in and uh, works rather well. It'll even squeeze them out too. And uh, that was my little set that I made. You know, they, they, they look ugly, but you know what? They work. That's the main thing. You know, the tool doesn't have to look beautiful as long as it functions properly. And for anything that's nearby me, that's pretty much about it for my homemade shop tools. And, uh, you know, and as I need tools that, you know, I can make, I'll make them before I'll go out and buy them, you know, just because it's cheaper. Um, if I don't have material on hand, well, oh well, that's life. Then I'll go out and buy the tool or I'll go buy some material. One other thing I made, now I didn't make the whole, whole torch piece. But this cap here I made because the original one was a flimsy piece of junk that ended up um, fracturing, I guess, from too much heat and stress. And so I made one out of a piece of bronze and uh, works great. I've actually run this for half an hour straight and no hassles with it. And it's on with an Allen set screw too. So I was able to adjust the height just right, you know, so I get a good flame out of there. And uh, it's actually made pretty much uh, to spec as the original one that was actually came off here, except it looks a little cooler and, you know, it's actually thicker, so it'll resist more heat. Um, so that was the other thing I did. I think that's about it. So it's, uh, yeah, that's pretty much about it. So yeah, that's uh, pretty much the gist of it and uh, my, so a, lot of my, a lot of my shop made tools. So I um, hope you enjoyed the video and uh, have a great day. Happy YouTubing.